Hare Krishna. We are going to say a few words in glorification of Lord Chaitanya. And then we'll have the arti. And then today, not tomorrow, today will be prasadam. And oh, it'll be so nice. Okay, so you can repeat after me, please. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gora Bhakta Vrinda Yes, so everyone sit down, relax, relax. Like we said, the night is young. So, yeah, okay, so a few, a couple more prayers. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nera Vishesha Shunyavadi Pascha Chadeshatarne Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitya Nanda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shivas Adi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchakalpa Tarubhyas Jai Kripa Sindhu Pya Evaja Paditanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha So yes, today is the appearance day we say, or you could say birthday, but we say appearance day of Lord Chaitanya who is the most recent incarnation of Krishna. The most recent incarnation, the most recent appearance of the Supreme Lord, of God, yes. He appeared in this world in Bengal on this very day, right about this time, at least Indian time, about seven o'clock, around seven o'clock it was, yeah. Five hundred and what is it? What did we say? 37. Was it 37? 1486, anyway. You, you can count back. And, yeah, 1486 by the Western calendar. And Lord Chaitanya, he established the what is called in Sanskrit the Yuga Dharma. The period of time is called a yuga. And dharma indicates the recommended process of religion for the yuga, for that particular age. And in this age which we're in, and we're, st we'll, we're still in it, 537 or whatever years later, the prescribed process is chanting the holy names of the Lord. Chanting the holy names. And of course, there are many holy names. We use the term mantra. Uh, there are many mantras 
made up of different names of the Supreme Lord, but particularly what's recommended and practiced, in fact, generally, at least in the sort of, in Southeast Asia, it's not just India, but the whole area. So the main mantra is the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So he established that and, well, mainly in that area around India and the surrounding parts uh, of that part of the world. And of course, in the meantime, in the last, what, 60 years or thereabouts, it's spread all over. It's really spread all over the world, including to Rondebosch. Yeah, here we are in Rondebosch. And it's, it's with us here, all over South Africa. <coughs> One of my close friends, see, we used to go to Russia. You know, in the meantime, something happened. We won't talk about that. <coughs> but we used to go to Russia, and the response from the Russian people was just absolutely outstanding. Absolutely. Was, they just really took to it completely, heart and soul. The great, so many people at least. And one time, one of my close friends was in, deep in Siberia. You've probably heard of Siberia, the salt mines. Anyway, way out there. And he was waiting in an, air, in an airport for a flight. And there was one elderly gentleman from the communist times sweeping the airport. And that gentleman walked up to him and said, Who are you in Russian? Who are you? What are you? Are you a Buddhist? And my friend said, no, I'm Hare Krishna. And he said, oh, Hare Krishna. And my friend said, you heard of Hare Krishna? Because this is way out in the, beyond the sticks. <laughs> it's just too far out. It's another world. So yeah, you heard of Hare Krishna. And this elderly man from the communist times took a step back and said, of course I have. You think I'm stupid? <laughs> so really, it's all over. It's really all over. It's wonderful. And that is the, the mission of Lord Chaitanya to spread the chanting of the holy names right out even to far-flung places where you wouldn't expect it at all. It's amazing. So let, we'll just say a few words about Lord Chaitanya. I, I know you're feeling separation from prasadam, and that's nice. Separation makes the heart grow fonder, isn't it? Well, like I said, hunger is the best chef. Even things you can't normally stand, <laughs> if you're hungry enough, gosh, they taste fantastic. So Lord Chaitanya appeared then, 1486, on this very day, at, you know, round about this time. And his parents... Of course, he is God. God doesn't have parents. He is the parent of every living entity, not just the humans even, but literally every living entity. But for the sake of his pastimes, yes, it's sort of like not exactly a game, but just for his enjoyment, he appears in this world 
and tries to help people to understand what is truth and what is falsehood and to really come right and get out of the the great struggle in this world. Yeah, so, so Lord Chaitanya, therefore, a, as a pastime for his enjoyment, he accepts a, a man and a woman from amongst his devotees, we use that term for like followers, the devotees, uh, and he chooses one man, one woman, who are, who are already great devotees. He chooses them as his mother and father. Not exactly, but in that type of role at least. Playing that part, but like it's not a game. But yeah, just uh, conducting themselves like that. So Lord Chaitanya, you know, it is... A long story, actually. In Krishna consciousness, we have many long stories. To cut it relatively short, no, to cut it short, let me just tell you that they had eight daughters prior to the appearance of Lord Chaitanya as, you know, sort of, apparently their son. But those eight daughters, my dear devotees and friends, they all died. All eight of them. Can you imagine if you're a parent? You, you would at least have some idea how it feels to lose a child. Wow. It's, it's drastic. But eight. Oh. So, yeah, eight died. And then they had one son who lived. He survived. His name was Vishvarup. And then after him, as the tenth, was Lord Chaitanya himself, who is the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, you know, leading up to it, the father, his name was Jagannath Mishra. The mother, her name was Sachi. Um, so the father, Jagannath Mishra, <coughs> he had experiences like really otherworldly types of experiences. And right, the culmination was that he saw from above, a, a great transcendental personality enter into his heart and then transfer himself into the heart of his wife, Sachi, and then into her womb. And then, then different amazing things happened and they in the, the biography of Lord Chaitanya, the main biography, Chaitanya Charitamrita, then it describes Jagannath Mishra is telling Sachi, his wife, that, you know, people, people just keep walking up to me and giving me money and giving me clothes and give, giving me foodstuffs. They just walk up and and give me these things and offer respect. They bow down in front of me. Something is really going on here. Yes, well, what was going on, in fact, was that those people, they didn't exactly know, like in really literal terms, but somehow or other they had some inspiration, some feeling that this person is in a very, very special position. This person has been accepted by the Lord, the Supreme Lord. 
as like a via medium, you could say, for the Lord to make his appearance in this world. So this, this was going on, and then um, Sachi showed signs of being pregnant, and, but the thing is, devotees and friends, listen to this and fasten your seatbelts. She did not give birth for 13 months. Those of you who have given birth, <laughs> you, would, you would know what it might feel like, you know, going over term, like four months, whatever. So yes, she didn't give birth for 13 months. She's pregnant, very pregnant. And what is going on? But then her father, his name was Nilamba Chakravati, and he was like, well, he was a Brahmin, a priest type of person, but not just an ordinary priestly type of person. He had mystical powers. He had mystical powers. You know, he was expert in astrology, astronomy, and all sorts of all sorts of things like that. Omens, the science of omens. Yeah, all these things are realities actually. Yeah. And when when the pregnancy reached thirteen months, then he announced the child is going to take birth in a couple of days. And sure enough, he did. Lord Chaitanya took birth a couple of days later. And, um, yeah, let me just, just bear with me a sec, a sec or ten. And I'm going to read to you a few verses from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela, chapter 13, which is titled, The Appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. Okay, just like I said, bear with me. Asking for your one? I want a female one. <laughs> a South African female one. No, but the Lord appears in his original eternal form. So, when he appeared... There was an eclipse, a lunar eclipse that evening. And now I'm going to read a few verses, seven or eight verses. I'll just read the English, uh, which describes, like you could say, the reasoning behind the eclipse. Now, Lord Chaitanya, one of his names is Gora Chandra. Chandra means moon. And Gora means golden. Now, devotees and friends, I don't know if you've looked outside. Or it's a little early, actually. But tonight is the full moon. It's the full moon. And, you know, later on when it comes up, it'll, you'll see. The, the, uh, the moon is silver in color. Whereas Lord Chaitanya is Gora Chandra, the golden moon of Lord Chaitanya. And actually, I thought today of Googling and seeing what's the price, what's the price of silver in relation to the price of gold. But I forgot. <laughs> and but I can tell you, gold is many times the value of silver. Many times. 
So, okay, let us read here. Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila chapter 13. And I'll begin with verse 91. I'll just read the translations. When the spotless moon of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became visible, what would be the need for a moon full of black marks on its body? The moon, if you have a look, have a look tonight, and you'll see it has spots. The moon is spotty. Yeah. So when the spotless golden moon of Lord Chaitanya became visible, what's the use of a silver moon with lots of spots? Considering this, Rahu, the black planet, covered the full moon and immediately vibrations <coughs> of Krishna, Krishna, Hari, inundated the three worlds. What vibrations? You're really feeling hungry, aren't you? I can tell. Hungry and tired. <coughs> no, it wasn't like that. It was more like, Krishna, Krishna, Hari. Not too bad. You're getting there. <laughs> we'll get you there eventually. So, yeah, those vibrations inundated the three worlds. Because, you know, in India, or even Southeast Asia, it used to be the practice. It's not really now, but it used to be. When there is an eclipse, people gather like everybody. They just stop what they're doing, and they gather. Uh, and normally during the, the period of the actual eclipse itself, then they, uh, they enter a body of sacred water. Like in this case, they're in Bengal, so the Ganges. They entered the Ganges, and then they would chant, because um, eclipses are generally considered inauspicious, not good for you. And I don't know if you've been in an eclipse. I've been in two. And, you know, the first one I was in, it was a, a solar eclipse. Solar eclipse, about like a half eclipse. And I remember it was about 9 o'clock in the morning. And it was not dark like this, but it was twi like twilight. And I remember really feeling sticky and like, kind of like I overexerted myself. So yeah, they're inauspicious. Therefore, the people go to sacred places, immerse themselves in some sacred water, some sacred river like the Ganges or lake, and chant the names of the Lord through the whole period until the eclipse finishes, which, you know, it takes a while, an hour, couple of hours, something like that. So that's what happened there in Bengal where Lord Chaitanya appeared. All these people, loads and like millions of people, really, really lots of people, they went into the Ganges and they chanted and chanted and chanted to ward off the inauspicious influence of the eclipse. Now, devotees and friends, like we said, it is the mission of Lord Chaitanya to establish the chanting of the holy name. So, Shri Shri Nittai Mayapur Chandra Ki Jai. And don't forget, the night is young. <laughs> and you don't have to 
go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Just tell them, Bhakti Chaitanya Swami said. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, his mission is to establish the chanting of the holy names. And now the chanting is going on, on on a big scale. Millions and like hundreds of millions of people, ultimately. They're just chanting and chanting for at least an hour or a couple of hours. This was the arrangement of the Lord because he is controlling everything. Even the phases of the moon and all that, that sort of cosmic stuff, phenomena. Yeah, and he is, he's controlling everything. He's controlling, for example, how your hair is growing out of your head. Did you know, devotees and friends, that while you're sitting here right now, and by the time we finish in, you know, whenever it, the time comes, because the night is young, don't forget that, <laughs> then your hair will have grown a little bit. Ha, ha, ha. But it's true. It's actually true. And if we could control, he can control that. If we could control that, if I could control that, it'd save me a fortune in razor blades. <laughs> but I can't because I'm not on his level. So, yeah, so to establish his mission, he arranged for this solar eclipse, I mean lunar eclipse, or he arranged to appear when the lunar eclipse was scheduled, because all these things are scheduled. You know, they, they know. Even the scientists bless their, you know, kind of silly hearts or silly heads. They know when the eclipses are going to take place, because it's all calculable. So, he appeared, and the eclipse happened, and everyone was chanting, and Lord Chaitanya appeared. And the, the idea behind that was, well, let me just, what should I do? Anyway, let me just say that the understanding is that the silver moon, normally he thinks he's, you know, fairly cool, and, you know, silver is nice, but compared to gold, silver is kind of tinny. So the understanding is the moon, the silver moon, felt embarrassed and hid his face. And that was the eclipse, because he didn't want to look stupid and cheap, you know, like that. When the golden moon, Gora Chandra, the golden moon of Lord Chaitanya appeared, so he hid his face. Yeah. So, so that was going on. All of that was going on. And, yeah, so Lord Chaitanya appeared. And, you know, when, when, Children took birth in those days. I mean, in those days, abortion was unknown. You know, of course, sometimes a lady would have a miscarriage, but, you know, that's something different than, you know, abortion as such. So, right, so, so, so now Lord Chaitanya is there, and... The people gathered from all around, hundreds and thousands of people gathered, and devotees and friends, demigods came from the higher planets. They came from the higher planets to have darshan, to see 
the supreme personality of Godhead who's just appeared because it's so incredibly, incalculably auspicious. The presence of the Supreme Lord is just, you cannot put a value on it. Billions, trillions, yeah. That means nothing compared to the value of the presence of the Supreme Lord. So, the demigods came and Mother Sachi, Jagannath Mishra, the parents, there they are, and everyone's coming and congratulating them and having a look at baby and all that sort of thing, and it's just a joyful occasion. And all these demigods come, and the demigods don't speak Bengali, they speak Sanskrit. So there they are, they're greeting people and and accepting congratulations and gifts and so on. And someone walks by speaking Sanskrit. It's like, now what happened? Where is this person from? <laughs> yeah, and that's where they were from, up there in the heavenly planets. So it was really just an incredible occasion. So, okay, now Lord Chaitanya's there. And the ladies in the area, now listen to this, ladies, this, listen to this. You may not believe this, but the ladies in those days, they did not work in factories or even in offices. They didn't work at all. How's that? Are they backward or what? No. <laughs> they would take care of the house. Let me tell you just a funny little story because, you know, we have time. The night is young, right? <laughs> and the hungrier you become, the better it's going to be. I am doing you a favor. My gosh, you'll thank me. So, <laughs> there's this one lady, I read this story like five, six years ago in America and she had to get a new passport so she went into the passport office and she was interviewed by the, the clerk who said, what's your name? Okay. What's your address? Okay. What's your date of birth? Okay. What's your occupation? I am a, a, a housewife and mother stop. Um, no, I mean, what do you do? No, I'm a housewife and mother. No, no, really. I mean, what's, what's your work? I am a housewife and mother. Oh, you mean you're unemployed? <laughs> and she just walked out. She just, you know, didn't appreciate it. She, she, but she needed to get a passport, so she came back a little couple of weeks later or something. But she was ready this time. What's your name? Okay. Address? Okay. Date of birth? Okay. Occupation? I am a child development technologist. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> and she got a passport. Anyway, I diverge. So Lord Chaitanya, as a little child, means, little child means, by now he's maybe a year or maybe not a year, like, but something nine months to a year or so. And the, so the ladies, the ladies were not in the factory. Can you imagine? Not even in the office. They were at home looking after the family and the family situation. The environment in, in the home. But every day they would all come over to see little Lord Chaitanya. At the time he was called Nimai. It's like a child's calling name, Nimai. So that they'd all come and see Nimai. And Nimai, Lord Chaitanya, 
He's got his mission to do, establish the chanting. So, but he's just little. So what to do? He thought of a strategy. One day, he started crying. This is one of the prescribed duties of a child, to, to cry. <laughs> so he started crying and crying and crying and crying. And all the ladies, you know, they're experienced mothers and aunties and all that. So they tried all their tricks for pacifying the child, you know, bounce the child up and down, tell the child, look, look, there's made of Prabhu. <laughs> and little child, oh. <laughs> and that way the child gets distracted from crying. But this time they couldn't do anything to distract him. He just cried and cried and then cried more. I mean, he was like completely out of control. And the, one of the ladies, she tried all her tricks for pacifying a crying child. All of them. And she was just frustrated. She'd had enough. And she said, oh, Krishna. And he stopped crying. What happened? Are we onto something here? <laughs> then... He started crying again, crying and crying. So again she tried, Krishna! He stopped crying. And she understood. This is, here we, we're, on, we're really onto something here. And it became like the local game. He would cry and cry. They would all chant, Hare Krishna! And he'd stop and smile. And then he'd cry again and again, Hare Krishna. So you see, he's developing his movement, you could say, developing his mission. Yeah, really. So, but you know, Lord Chaitanya Nimai, when he was young, I mean, you know, like up to his sort of maybe 16 or something like that, teenage years, he did not show his divinity. He didn't show his divinity. Only on, on a few just extremely rare occasions with, you know, one particular person at a time on just a handful of occasions. The rest of the time, he acted as if he wasn't interested in God, religion, chanting the holy names. Yeah, he acted like he was a very arrogant, young, like intellectual scholar. He was studying Sanskrit, and he was just like incredibly expert. I don't suppose... Many or any, perhaps, of you have tried learning Sanskrit, but it's not easy. It's really not easy. You know, English, huh, English. English, English is for kids, actually. It's just such a simple little language and such a concoction, all these funny things that have been invented. But, uh, you know, Sanskrit, highly sophisticated grammar. It's amazing. Sophisticated and, and extremely systematic. He learnt the whole thing in a matter of days. Yeah. Uh, you know, all these conjugations, if you know what a conjugation is, like of verbs, nouns, all these things he learned just like that. Hearing one time, just one time, hear a rule, got it. That's it. So, 
And, you know, with his, his contemporaries, the other young boys around about his age, like Gadadha. Gadadha became extremely famous as a member of the Panchatattva with Lord Chaitanya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadha, Shivas Adigora Bhaktivrinda. So Gadadha was a devotee, born in a devotee family, and he was a real devotee even at this young age, at school, studying Sanskrit. And there was another one, Mukunda, Mukunda Dutt, who was also from a devotee family, and he was really a devotee. And they would, well, well, Nimai, Lord Chaitanya, would challenge them to debates, discussions in Sanskrit, and he'd force them to take part. He wouldn't let them go unless they agreed to get into a debate with him about some particular point in Sanskrit. But he was so incredibly brilliant, he would totally defeat them, even though they were expert. But he would totally defeat them. And then, you know, if it's a debate on a particular subject, like... Uh, what is a pizza? How's that? That's an interesting subject. What do you think of that? What is a pizza? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> a pizza is a self-realized roti. <laughs> yes, it's very advanced. <laughs> roti. Ah, oh, Krishna, yeah. So, he would defeat them like wipe the fellow off the face of the earth and really rub it in. And then he'd say, okay, okay, listen, I will take your point of view. I will argue your point of view. You take my point of view and we'll debate, you know, swapping positions. And then... He would totally obliterate the fellow in argument, taking what had been that fellow's point of view. I don't know if you get the idea there, but it was just incredible, like su superhuman in the extreme, really in the extreme. So, and they would also, particularly Gadadhar and Mukunda, as his classmates, basically the same age, living there like neighbors, more or less. And, and their families, even Lord Chaitanya's family, his father and mother, they were really devotees, very, very sincere and dedicated devotees. Although he was this arrogant young scholar, but the families, the other families, they're also they're great, great devotees. So Mukundra and Gadadha, from time to time, they would speak to Nimai and tell him, Nimai, come on, why don't you become a devotee? Come join us. Come, come and have some kirtan with us, sing with us. And Nimai would say, no. You're never going to get me to jump up and down saying hurry, hurry, bowl like you guys. Forget it. I'm not going to make a fool of myself. So, but one day, one day, Mukunda, for the, I don't know, like hundredth time, said, listen, Nimai, come on, join us, become a devotee chant with us. And Nimai said, listen, listen, listen. I tell you what, after a few days, you're going to see me with the marks of a, of a devotee, like the tilak on the forehead and so on. You're going to see me like that. 
And Mukunda thought, what? What happened? <laughs> He's going to become a devotee? I can't believe it. But then Lord Chaitanya said, you know what? I am going to become such a devotee that Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva will come and bow down before me. And Mukunda, Mukunda thought, you know what? This man is just too much. <laughs> yeah, and he said, just listen to me. Just hear me. I will become the best of all the devotees. Yeah, I'll become the best. Those who run away when they see me now because they don't want to get into an argument, they'll sing my glories as a devotee. So, you know, on one hand it sounds good, on the other hand it seems like he's extremely arrogant, really arrogant. So anyway, anyway, what happened was, like I said, it's a long story, and we are abbreviating in the extreme here, but we're just sort of taking a few steps <clears throat> through the at least the earlier part of Lord Chaitanya's life or time on this planet. When, when Lord Chaitanya like, was like probably 15, 16, um, this one devotee, Ishvara Puri, came and stayed with his parents. And Ishvara Puri was a very, like a super exceptional devotee. And Lord Chaitanya associated with him and was very impressed, really, really deeply moved by his association. But then Ishvara Puri left, and shortly after, Lord Chaitanya's father, Jagannath Mishra, passed away. He died at a relatively young age. Because Lord Chaitanya is not even 20 yet. So Lord Chaitanya then went to Gaya in Bihar, where there's a special shrine where people perform the last rites for departed family members. Gaya, it's still there. And they still, people come in there thousands and thousands to do the last rites for departed family members. People come from hundreds of kilometers to do that. So Lord Chaitanya went there to do the last rites for his father. And when he was there, who should he meet but Ishvara Puri, that same Ishvara Puri, who he had had been so extremely impressed with as a devotee. So Lord Chaitanya, Lord, Lord Chaitanya approached him and asked him, would you please give me initiation? Initiation in the life of a devotee, uh, at least after someone has been practicing Krishna consciousness for a while, a year, a couple of years, or some, some time like that, then it's, it's definitely recommended at least that they become initiated, uh, which includes accepting someone as your teacher, a particular person as your personal teacher or spiritual master. So now Lord Chaitanya, Nimai, he wants to accept this Ishvara Puri as his spiritual master. So he asked him after he had done the rites for his father, but before he left to go home, he asked him, would you please initiate me and accept me as your disciple? So Ishvara Puri agreed and did. He initiated him. There's a ceremony involved. He did that ceremony. Now Lord Chaitanya is initiated. And Lord Chaitanya asked him, 
What should I do now? Now I'm initiated. What should I do? What's like my duty? What's the best thing for me to do? And Lord Chaitanya suggested, should I get into philosophical debates? Should I do that? Would that be appropriate for me? Now I'm an official disciple with my official spiritual master. Should I do that? <clears throat> and Ishvara Puri said, said, no, don't do that. And he spoke one famous verse, and a very important and very wonderful verse, which appears in Chaitanya. This is all described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And that verse appears a number of times in the book. So the verse is, the Sanskrit is, Harir Nam, Harir Nam, Harir Nam, Eva Keva Lam, Kalo Nastyeva 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 Gatir Anyata, which means chant the holy names, chant the holy names, chant the holy names three times. Harir Nam, chant the holy names of Hari, Krishna. In this Kali Yuga, this age we're in, Kalo in Kali Yuga, Nastyeva, Nastyeva, Nastyeva. There's no other way, no other way, no other way for achieving God consciousness or achieving the goal of life, literally the verse says. So that's what he told him to do. And Lord Chaitanya said, right, right, that's it. I am going to do that. And off he went. And off he went to where he was staying there in Gaia, because he's still in Gaia. And he went off chanting the holy names, particularly the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And that night, the whole night, he chanted the holy names. And Lord Chaitanya, of course, as we've emphasized, he, he's not just one of us like you or me, just, you know, ordinary people <laughs> in this world, wandering around in this world, feeling our way around in this material world. He is the Supreme Lord. So spiritually, he, he is the supreme being. I mean, he's in a category of his own. So he was chanting and chanting. And when a person chants, if a person really, really chants very, very nicely for a, an extended period of time, and they just really get into it and just immerse themselves, completely in the chanting of the holy names then because these holy names they're sacred and they're, they're actually forms of God yes the Lord is present in his names so Lord Chaitanya as he's chanting and chanting he became overpowered by ecstatic symptoms, Ecstat or different ecstatic symptoms like shaking of the body, tears coming from, tears of ecstasy coming from the eyes, sometimes fainting or falling to the ground, like the body just becomes overpowered, basically. And acting, actually acting, as if he was an ordinary person, Lord Chaitanya went back to Ishwarapuri the next morning and said, what sort of mantra have you given me? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> as soon as I start chanting, I can't continue. I just, I become overpowered by it. So what, what is it? What, what have you done to me? <laughs> and Ishvara Puri, you know, he's a deep transcendental person. He understood what's going on. He understood who is Lord Chaitanya 
and what had happened. So he didn't bother answering the question. All he said was, congratulations, my dear child. You have perfected your life. Yeah. So from that time of his initiation in Gaia, Lord Chaitanya became a God-intoxicated person. He himself at that point was teaching Sanskrit, and he developed a whole system of teaching people Sanskrit based on the names of the Lord, yes, and different concepts which are there in Krishna consciousness. And, you know, I don't want to, I won't get into like detail on Sanskrit, but just one example. In Sanskrit, there's what, co what is called rules of Sunday. Sunday means that when the last letter of one word meets the first letter of the next word, then depending on what they are, the letters are at the end and the beginning of the two words, then they change. That's Sunday. Just like we in English. I say in English. Jolly good show. We say what? We say a dog, but we say an apple, isn't it? Do you say a apple? That would be very uncultured, wouldn't it? A apple. Give me, give me a, a apple. <laughs> but everyone just automatically says, give me an apple. But, you know, give me a dog. Well, I don't know about that. Anyway, yeah, you get the idea. So, <laughs> Lord Chaitanya, he devised the system of Sanskrit grammar where the letters... Like we have vowels and consonants, but he called them, what is it? S the, the, one, the letters which end words are sadhus, means saintly persons, and the letters which begin words are Vaishnavs. And when a, when a sadhu and a Vaishnav meet, then what happens is sadhu sangha. So that's the name of the rule for how the letters change. Anyway, sorry if I lost you on that one. <laughs> but it's fun, actually. And it's, it's still, that system of, of grammar is still taught, Lord Chaitanya's system. So, right, you know, Lord Chaitanya, so then... Now he's this God-intoxicated person, and he goes back and he's teaching the students Sanskrit using this system that I just mentioned. And, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty extraordinary. And then he really started manifesting himself as a devotee and preaching Krishna consciousness, and telling everyone, and, and really developing the Krishna consciousness movement. Um, but not showing himself to be a devotee. I mean, uh, to be the Supreme Lord, excuse me. Just acting as a devotee not showing himself to be the Supreme Lord, but devotees and friends. One day he decided to show the devotees that he is the Supreme Lord. So he performed what's called the Mahaprakash Leela or Shatta Prahariya uh, Leela, a pastime of 21 hours for 21 hours, he called the devotees one by one. I mean, they're all there, hundreds of them, one by one. 
he calls them. And he explains how they have been together in previous appearances of his, or how he, before he was, so to speak, born, how he descended just, just before he was born, just before he appeared, he descended to intervene into the lives of different of these devotees who are all gathered there. For example, he told one devotee, the name of the devotee is not mentioned, but he says to this devotee, you remember, you had a fever, and it was such a serious fever, you were going to die, but you couldn't get a doctor, so you just sort of resigned yourself I'm just going to die. That's it. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, a doctor appeared and gave you medicine and your fever disappeared. You remember that? And the devotee said, yes, I remember that. That was incredible. I couldn't believe it. There was no doctor. Suddenly there's a doctor. And I've got this terrible fever, incredible fever. Suddenly, it's just totally normal, like within one second. And the doctor vanished. He didn't just quickly walk out. He just suddenly, he just wasn't there. And Lord Chaitanya said, yes, that was me. I descended from Vaikuntha to save your life. Yeah. And other things, there was this one devotee, Gangadas, who had been a teacher of Lord Chaitanya's. And Lord Chaitanya called him and he said, you remember, you remember that night the Muslims attacked your village. And we're not trying to get into some, you know, anti-Muslim thing, but you remember the Muslims attacked your village. And they're just killing and destroying and raping and just moving through the village. But your house was on the other side. So you heard it and you ran. And you took your family and you ran to the Ganges. It's like 500 meters away or something. And so now it's the middle of the night. You're looking for a boat. Where's a boat? But it's the middle of the night. There's no boat and no boatman. And you can hear the Muslims are coming closer and smashing and people are just screaming and wailing. And then you thought, we can't escape. I don't want to see what they do to my wife and daughters. I'm just going to commit suicide. And suddenly, a boat appeared. It just appeared. There was no boat. Like for hundreds of meters up and down the river, suddenly there's a boat and the boatman. And I, we jumped in and I said to the boatman, take us to the other side. I'll give you anything. I'll give you everything. I'll give you whatever I have. I'll, I'll give you my life. You can keep me as a servant for the rest of your life, but just take us to the other side. And the boatman did. And Lord Chaitanya said, you remember that? And Gangadas said, yes, I remember that. And Lord Chaitanya told him, that was me. I descended from Vaikuntha to save you. And... There's another one. I mean, he. this is all recorded, all these interactions with all these de- many devotees. It's quite amazing. With Haridas Thakur, you remember the drama, right? That was Haridas Thakur. It was pretty good, I must admit. Haridas Thakur, who was born in a Muslim family. So... Listen to this. 
There, there is a blessing attached to just this little description of the Lord's interaction with Haridas Thakur at that time. If the blessing says, one who hears this pastime of the Lord and Haridas Thakur with proper faith will certainly enjoy the fruit of love for Lord Krishna. So, in, in other words, listen carefully. Are you listening? Are you listening? Okay. Make a point of listening. Okay. You're listening too. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Forgot. I forgot. Yes, of course. It's in its infancy, actually. So Lord Chaitanya says, Look at me, Haridas. Your body and birth is superior to mine, and your class and caste is more elevated than mine. Listen, Haridas, when you were lashed with the whip in the different marketplaces, 22 marketplaces, I took up my Sudarshan disc and descended to the earth from Vaikuntha. So this is before Lord Chaitanya actually took birth or, or appeared. I descended to the earth from Vaikuntha, intending to sever the tormentors' heads. When your tormentors were trying to beat you to death, all along you were thinking for their well-being. You were unconcerned about your own pains. You had only compassion for them. And because of your merciful heart, I could not use force. My Sudarshan disc weapon was rendered impotent. I couldn't strike those men because you were determined to forgive them. And so, unable to see your misery, I protected you from their lashes by placing my back on your back. I accepted all those lashes meant for you on your back, on my back. See the marks on my back. Lord Chaitanya turns his back to Haridas, and Haridas sees the scars on Lord Chaitanya's back, which are there just, you know, just there at that point in time only, not like generally. I'm not lying. Whatever other secondary reasons there were for my descent, unable to bear your suffering, sufferings, I hastened my advent to this world. And the author, Vrindavan Das Thakur, says, Our beloved Lord Chaitanya is very proficient in expanding the glories of his devotees. He will say or do anything to glorify and protect his devotees. He will even swallow fire for his devotees and willingly become his devotee's slave. This is Lord Chaitanya. So devotees, I can, I'm sitting here and I, I can hear some tummies rumbling. Just gently, mildly. So I know the night is young, all right? I know that. But it's not Janmashtami tonight. If it was, hurry ball. <laughs> so, I'll just tell you one more story. It's a nice one. Or maybe two. But anyway... You know, this, there's this famous verse spoken by Lord Chaitanya. Priti viti yacha yata nagaradi gram sarvatra prachara haibe moranam. You all know this verse, right? You know this verse. Okay, okay, all right. I'm sorry, excuse me. Just, I do things like this sometimes. 
Yeah, pretty vitae. Pretty is the earth. Yeah. Lord Chaitanya is saying, Nagaradi Gram, in every town and village on this planet, my names will be chanted. Pretty viti achiyata yata. Nagaradi Gram. Sarvatra Prachara Haibe Mora Nam. So Lord Chaitanya was on his way to Vrindavan. And again, it's a bit of a long story, but he stopped at a place called Ramakali, which at the time was the seat of government of Bengal, the Muslim rulers at that time. Five Muslim ruler at that time, you know, Muslims, you know, Haribo, at least the heavy ones, you know, they're tough guys. And this particular one, his name was Hussein Shah, and he was really, 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 really like vicious and anti anyone who was not Muslim. Vrindavan, went through Ramakali. It's kind of northern Bengal. And he went through. And the, that Muslim ruler, Hussein Shah, he had a minister of kind of Hindu affairs. Not that Lord Chaitanya is really Hindu, but you know, something, something. And this fellow, Keshava Khan, he knew all about what's going on in the Hindu world and the non-Muslim world around the area. So this Hussein Shah asked Keshava Khan, who's this Chaitanya who just arrived? He's here with a few million people and they're just, you know, it's like the festival of the century. You know, to make the Rand Easter show like people are asleep or something. It's just, they're just, sure, it's way out, really extreme. So the Hussein Shah, this heavy ruler, he asks, who, who is this Chaitanya fellow? And Keshava Khan, he doesn't want to make a big thing of it like, yeah, he's great. Wow, he's the greatest. You know, and he's helping so many people and they worship him. And oh, he's fantastic. He said, who? What, what was that name? Chaitanya. Who's this Chaitanya? Oh, him. Oh, he's just some foreigner. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about him. He's not important. Yes, you got, you got better things to do than worry about him. And the Sassain Shah said, no, no. He's a great saint. He's amazing. In fact, I think he's an incarnation of Krishna. And Keshava Khan's like, what is going on here? And this fellow, the king, says, don't you speak about him in those terms. That's very offensive to talk about him like that. And, yeah, and he says, I am giving an order con concerning this Chaitanya. If anyone disturbs him, he's free to go anywhere, preach anything he wants from his scriptures. He can do kirtan, whatever he likes. If ever anyone tries to stop him for anything, anyone, Police anyone, 
I'll kill them. And Keshava Khan reported this to Lord Chaitanya, that this is what's happened to this fellow. He is like super duper extreme. I mean, you just practically couldn't get more extreme than him, like mass murderer. Yeah. Uh, like really, really severe. And they told, explained to Lord Chaitanya and, and his, like his close devotees, this is what happened. And the devotees said, wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. It's unbelievable. Him. It's not possible, but it's true. How could it be? We've never heard of anything like this ever before. And Lord Chaitanya said, you think that's amazing that this fellow becomes sort of like a devotee? You think that's amazing? Just wait and see. Priti viti achayata nagaradi gram sarvatra prachara haibe moranam in every town and village on the surface of this planet, my holy names will be chanted. And when that happens, that will be amazing. That will really be amazing. And you know, it's happening. I mean, we're not there yet, but we're working on it. We're working on it. You know, one devotee told me a few years ago, he was with Prabhupada in, in Brazil on an airplane flying somewhere. And the air hostess was really nice, just extremely nice. Then they got off the plane and she said goodbye and, you know, like really so nice. About 10 years later, that devotee was up in the deep Amazon, way up where there's no roads. That you can only get there by boat. And so there they are. They're up there. They went up by boat to distribute books. And he knocks on one door opens the door, and there's a lady in a sari with tilak on. And she says, ah, oh, you're a devotee. Come in. And this is like, you know, hundreds or even a couple of thousand kilometers up into the Amazon. And he walked in. Her place is full of pictures of Krishna. Deities are there. And she said, I'm so happy to meet a devotee. I haven't seen a devotee for ages. And she said, you know what happened? I was a, an air stewardess deeply. I became a devotee. And here I am. Yeah. Around. Getting around here and there. All sorts of places you wouldn't expect. Uh, he's very merciful. He's the most recent incarnation of the Lord but particularly people who are not qualified. Particularly in the form of chanting the holy names. Um, 